Hello, I'm Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob, and today I'm going to revisit Windows 11 now that it's been released. And the reason I'm remaking a video on how to install it in Workstation 16 Pro is very simple. They've added some security features, or rather I should say security requirements, because these were features in the previous Windows 10. However, they were off by default. And a lot of us, including myself in some cases, um, just left them like that, either because I do, you know, their demo environments, it doesn't matter and whatnot. So the point is, is there's a whole lot of uh, PCs out there and desktops and laptops and so forth that all aren't as secure as they could be. So for Windows 11, they're now forcing us to have things like TPM. And, and so anyway, all these things have to be in place in order to install. Now, what that does is it creates a new set of challenges in that we, there's a few more steps to installing Windows 11 on, especially in a virtualized environment, of course, on a PC as well. So you wanna make sure that your PC is Gen 8 or above to install it. And if you're gonna be using Workstation 16 Pro, like I'm gonna show you today, then you still need to have the proper hardware to support it. So if you enjoy this video, by the way, give us a thumbs up and um, consider subscribing. That really helps us out. So two things. One, you're going to have to go and download the Windows 11. So the way I've done that is I went ahead and I Googled it. So if you type in download Windows 11 ISO, ISO, in case that wasn't obvious, uh, it will bring you to this page. So this is basically uh, uh, Microsoft.com. And then there's the... Uh, the language there and it's software download slash windows 11 you can like i said google it you, you will find it um i have no affiliation to google but that's what i use uh, and so you go below and you'll see a few different options here since i'm not upgrading i'm literally creating a new virtual machine you're going to go all the way down where it says windows disk image so that's the iso i was mentioning and you're, you may have to drop down and select Windows 11. That is the only choice. So you can select this and click download, and that will get you an ISO file. Remember where you put that, most likely it's gonna go in your download directory on your PC. So next, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go into here, which is VMware Workstation. This is the 16 Pro. I very strongly urge you, even if you have 16 Pro written right there, make sure you have the latest build, the latest version of 16 Pro. It sounds weird, but there's more than one 16 Pro out there. So make sure you get the latest build from VMware that will uh, help you and minimize errors and strange things. Uh, I even get caught myself sometimes. I, I think a couple weeks ago I was doing something and um, I was getting this error and lo and behold, I ended up talking to somebody who, who I, mean, I should have thought of this myself, but they said, hey, uh, I, you might be running the last version of the build and not the most recent one. And lo and behold, that actually fixed the problem. And we, we actually thought it was uh, related to a new driver for a new piece of equipment. And it was uh, not that at all. So, all right, instead of rambling on, I'm gonna go right into it. So the, it's as easy as clicking on create a new virtual machine. And as soon as you do that, I'm gonna select custom here i'm going to do next and i've mentioned with some of my other videos the different compatibilities that you can select now if you don't have anywhere else well this vm is going to go you probably don't care use the one for workstation 16 if that's the version you have or if you have future version 17 or whatever use the one on the very top of the list the most recent one is probably the best way to go if you have an environment where you have multiple servers however then i strongly urge you to consider that as it may save you some steps if you make a mistake and you select, let's say, ESX i7, and then you realize, oops, my server actually has 6.7, and now it's giving me an error when I try to migrate this virtual machine to that server. Uh, I have a video for that on how to go and change that. It's a little bit manual, but anyway, you can go right into it and change the hardware compatibility level of your virtual machine. But selecting the proper thing now will save you from having to, uh, tamper with it and have to do anything in the future all right so in my case um i'm probably not going to move this since it's it's more or less just a demo and a trial here but since i do have a lot of esxi servers running in both my test environments and in uh, production at clients and so forth i'm actually going to go and select esxi 7 i'm going to go say next i will install the operating system later so i'm going to leave that like that now because the Windows 11 is very recent, I don't have here in where it says version, I do not have 
11. So I'm going to pick Windows 10 64, knowing that I'm actually installing Windows 11. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just replace this. And I'm going to send it to VM slash Win11, like so. And this I'm going to just change its name to Windows 11. There we go, just to change it like that. And I believe that that should not say 10, that should say 11. Okay, do next. And here you're gonna have to select UEFI and select Secure Boot. So that is one of the requirements of Windows 11. Please put that or else it won't work. And you'll see, uh, I actually tried this video. Uh, <laughs> this is my second run on it. And uh, I goofed and uh, forgot one step and ended up with uh, the problem where it says, oh, sorry, it's not compatible. So you need to have obviously uh, a PC that you're running the Workstation Pro on that has enough CPUs to handle whatever you want to put here. So in my case, I have lots of CPUs. So I'm going to give it one processor with eight cores. And I'm going to go next. Now, Windows 11 does require uh, at least, let's say, 8 gigs. So it does need a bit more power than the previous versions. So we're going to leave this to uh, Network Address Translation, or NAT, for the network card. So all this is very basic. If you were doing Windows 10, you would be doing the exact same thing. And I've got an NVMe in here, so I'm going to leave it like that and create a new disk. I'm going to make sure that it's large enough just to... So I can play with it later on. I'm going to leave it this. It doesn't matter if it splits it or not for me at this point. This is what it wants to call it. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. And now I'm going to click finished. We're not done yet. So we're going to go back. It's going to appear here. Now we need to do edit. And there's a few things. Um, one of the requirements, as I mentioned, was TPM2. Now, if you wanted to add this, you would get a, an error. And let me just show you what it does, because that's the obvious thing you'd want to do is click add and click trusted platform module right here. And it just it's grayed out. So right there, you've got a problem. You can't you know can't click on finish. And what do you do? So you're, what you're going to do to enable this is go to option. You're going to go where it says access control and you're going to encrypt now. It's going to ask you for a password. You're adding this password. Keep track of it, please. Uh, and don't send me an email asking me what's the default password. It's whatever you put in here. So put something that you will remember. Uh, I mean, look, we all do it. I do a lot of demos and uh, I tend to always change the password every single time I create one. And sometimes I do forget to write them down, especially when they're demo environments. And then I have to... Uh, rack my brain or I have to redo it because I just can't remember the password. So I put in a password, I do encrypt, it's going to encrypt it. Now we're not quite done yet, so I'm gonna go back to hardware. And now I go back here, click here, click trusted platform, and look at that, now I can do finish, and I could add the trusted platform module. It is now present. So that was the missing piece. And of course, I'm gonna go and add my ISO file, which, I add it to um, VMs Windows 11. Oops, I keep typing Windows 10. Okay, and if I say browse. No, actually, this is my ISO. So it's under, I put it under downloads. Here we go. And okay, so now I've got my ISO that's going to load. It's going to connect the power on. I've got enough processors, enough memory, and enough disk space. As you remember, I encrypted the VM and I made sure that it's using secure boot. And with the trusted platform module that is present is detected. Now I should be able to click OK. And this is where we cross our fingers and press play here. And it should appear, okay, this is very good. Press any key. So far, so good. So now I have the Windows logo. And yes, it has changed slightly. So this is a, I won't say prettier, because I, I think it was prettier the other way. But anyway, so now I'm just going to go ahead and do a normal installation. It looks very similar to what Windows 10 was. Uh, do next, do install. This is a demo, so I'm not going to put in a key or anything at this point. I just want to get into it simply just to show you. So I'm going to put, I don't have I don't have a product key yet. I'm going to put Pro. And uh, you can, by the way, go to the Microsoft Store if you need to buy 
get or if you need to buy Windows 11 or if you need a key code there, just the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do next. I'm gonna do custom install. It sees my drive. I say next and there we go. Now it did not complain about the TPM. It did not complain about secure boot. It didn't complain about anything or else you would not have gotten this far. So like I said, this is actually my second run of this. The first time I had just forgotten to go back and add the TPM module after I had uh, uh, encrypted the machine and, uh, and went, oops. So this is it. Uh, Windows 11, I'm not gonna go through the features in this particular video. I just really wanted to show you how you get it into VMware because as you saw, there's a few extra steps there that are not obvious and I got a lot of emails. So I thought it would be, uh, uh, you know, way of saving you all time and um, showing you how simple it is. Uh, at some point, you will get a new version of VMware Workstation, whether it's just a new build of the 16 Pro or they release the 17 Pro at some point, and it will include the Windows 11, because that's usually what it does. When you do migrate to new operating system, keep in mind that uh, some applications perhaps go and look at what you're running and they may decide that your applications either aren't compatible to the OS or the point is this do a lot of testing before you migrate too many things to Windows 11. And this is why a lot of us love VMware, whether it's Workstation or ESXi, so that we can put it on there and do some testing. So if you're in a corporate environment, this is the way you could you know boot one up. Uh, put in your ERP system, put in your CRM system, put in whatever it is if it's not on the cloud, because I'm assuming if it's on the cloud, then there should be uh, you know minimal uh, effect to your environment. But if you've got in-house applications perhaps that you've coded, or if you have uh, older ERP systems that run with uh, databases and whatnot, well, this uh, is a great way to test those. So as you can tell right now we're rebooting, it's already installed. So it's going to ask me a bunch of information here, and I really, really don't care at this point for any of this. Uh, I'm just going to say skip. So of course it's the typical, and now it's going to check for updates. I mean, this came out uh, for me anyways last week. By the time you watch this, who knows how long it's been. But we'll, um, one of the big things with Windows 11 is I understand they'll be doing a major update once a year as opposed to like Windows 10, where it was twice a year. Um, I personally have seen... Microsoft cause problems with their updates. I mean, I know they're fixing bugs and I know that they're increasing the security and they're, they're, they're really trying to respond to a problem or add features that I get, but I, I have seen a lot of um, blue screens or things, you know, printers that didn't work all of a sudden or whatever it is, uh, you know, cameras that suddenly don't work, don't work anymore. So it, it is a unfortunate uh, in a way that we are continually forced to update in some environments. Uh, I get it for security though. I, I'm definitely telling you, you should upgrade. It's just when you get a larger environment, uh, sometimes you do have something that is sensitive um, and it's just the way it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna do, that's name. It's probably gonna ask me to create a user and all that stuff. And it's rebooting again, okay. So it's a lot of reboots. I remember when uh, people at Microsoft uh, used to tell me that in the future we wouldn't have to reboot. <laughs> I guess uh, they forgot about that or changed their minds. And by the way, there's a lot more steps in the final version than the original version because I don't, uh, I didn't see any of these screens the first, well, I shouldn't say that, I, I saw some of these screens, but uh, I don't remember it being this long and Okay, so yeah, so basically I could say it's for personal use. And then I most likely, yeah, actually absolutely want you to have, let's see, I want, I'm actually going to create just an offline account for this one. I'm going to type in Bob. I'm going to type in a super secret password. Super secret password again. And now it wants me to answer a bunch of questions. Okay, well, you know what? I'm not even going to. Um, uh, I'm going to disappoint some of you because I'm literally just going to type in YouTube everywhere, which you can do, by the way, if anybody out there is. 
trying to get a test environment up and quickly, that's the way to do it. Now do keep in mind that uh, obviously that's not very secure when you do it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable the diagnostic data uh, or disable is a big word. I'm just reducing the amount that it is sending and I'm going to take all these features off and it's going to check for updates and then hopefully we're in. So here we are finally we're in our Windows 11 and um, so like I said you know if you go to settings you can you can go and select things and you can always search. So if I want to search for Wi-Fi or display, uh, you know, it's written here, but the point is I can modify that. And of course, um, at this point, what I could do in VMware is, well, this is not, uh, yeah. So obviously I, I would probably want, and of course you can still right click and still go, let's say to display settings. And then I could, change my resolution and keep change so I mean it's still not big enough for what I'm doing but anyway the point is is you can keep uh that really doesn't matter anyway we're not going to sit here and play with that Ooh. okay well that one's that one's a definitely no no <laughs> okay so instead of doing that but anyway this is basically what it looks like so you get your start button here and it's a little different and again if you want to shut it down instead of going up to your name you know like it was before you gotta go on the bottom here and you can say sign out and you can click here and you could say uh, you know restart shut down so it's a little different i mean if you're i guess it depends on whether you get used to things or not i'm not sure i haven't installed anything and this is the iso i got from microsoft so i'm a little surprised to see adobe uh, lightroom there I'm not sure, or WhatsApp, or there, anyway, there's a few things that seem to be on there already. So, well, there you have it. So you have Windows 11 set up. Go ahead and adjust the uh, the screen resolution to your liking and so forth. And that's it. Oh, I just noticed that the bottom of the screen here was uh, not even there when I was uh, clicking. Interesting. Okay, well, I apologize for that. So anyway, the Windows 11 is up and running. So we can go ahead and uh, test stuff out. And of course, we'll be able to connect it to the network and so forth. Make sure to go off and purchase the Windows 11 if you do keep this. Um, again, this one's a demo, but the whole point is, is if it's useful uh, and it is in use legally, you're supposed to purchase it. So please go ahead and do that. Of course, you will get a little warning at some point uh, letting you know that you need to activate it. So please do so. So thanks for watching. Again, I'm Bob Pellerin. Leave some comments below. We do read those and appreciate your comments. You can always visit us as well at ctobob.com and we'll see you in the next video.